Good evening, friends. Pastor David here tonight. Thank you for joining me. Tonight, I would like to talk about another one of God's awesome attributes. And that attribute is the omniscience of God. What does it mean when the Bible says that God is omniscient? That is the question that I would like to answer. So let's dive in. In Baker's Encyclopedia of the Bible, omniscience is defined as God's infinite knowledge and understanding of all things, past, present, and future. So basically what we would say is that God knows all things. But what I want to do is I want to drill down and I want to look closely at what the Bible says about God's infinite knowledge, just so we have a better understanding of what the Bible says when it says that God is omniscient. So let's take a look at it. In Psalms 147, verse 5, it says, Great is our Lord and abundant in strength. His understanding is infinite. So the key word there in Psalms 147, verse 5, is infinite. God's understanding of all things, his knowledge, is infinite. Oxford's Dictionary defines the word infinite as limitless or endless in space, extent, or size. It's impossible to measure or calculate. And so is the omniscience of God. It is uh, limitless. He knows every detail of everything in this world. God knows every detail of every speck of dust on the planet Mars. He knows every detail of who you are, your physical body, your spiritual being, your mind. He knows everything. He has all knowledge. There's nothing that God does not know. That can be mind-boggling to think about. And if it is difficult for you to understand, well, welcome to the club. We're talking about God here. So let's go to a key text, a key passage that talks about the omniscience of God. And the key text is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6. So let's dive into this passage and explore what it means that God is omniscient. Psalms 139, verse 1 says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. So you need to understand, friends, that God knows you. He knows every detail about you, every detail about your f physical body, every detail about your mind, every detail of your heart. He knows about every single microscopic detail of your life. Matter of fact, God knows you better than you know yourself. You think you know your heart. You, you, you think you know what's going on, on the inside, but God knows the intricate details of our thought life, our spiritual life, and yes, even our physical life. He knows us uh, intimately. He knows everything about us. Look at verse 2. Verse 2 says, You know my sitting down and rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. So God knows everything we do in this life. He knows every time we sit, every time we rise up, every time we go somewhere, every time that we, we travel to another state, to another location, we go to a place. God knows everything about us as we go throughout this life. You know, God knows everything you do. He knows every thought. He knows it all. Continuing in verse 3, he says, You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Again, the psalmist is just reiterating the point that God sees everywhere we go. He knows everything about us. And yes, family, he knows every strength that you have and he knows every weakness that you have. He knows you in detail. Verse 4 says, For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. So God knows, sees, and hears every word that comes from our mouth. He knows the intent of every word. He knows the intentions in our heart behind every word that we speak. You know, that's why we need to be careful with our words. Our words can bless people, but our words can also tear people down. And we need to be remembered that we will be held accountable for every word that we speak, whether it's good or bad. Continuing on in um, verse 5 and 6, uh, Psalm 
139 says, You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. So even the psalmist, the, the author of Holy Scripture, who wrote Psalms 147, he even expresses his inability to fully understand the omniscience of God, the infinite knowledge. God's infinite knowledge is beyond our understanding. You see, there is nothing that God does not know. This is mind-boggling and hard to get our minds wrapped around, but it's the truth of who God is. You know, who would you consider to be the smartest person of all time? Would it be Albert Einstein? Would it be Stephen Hawking? Who would it be? Friends and family, may, the smartest man on this planet, whoever that may be, they have about five ounces of brain inside their skull. And there's not but so much information you can fit in that brain. Now, when you consider the size of man's brain to the size of this universe, that's how big God's mind is. This universe is endless in every direction. It's infinite. And so the same thing can be said of God's infinite knowledge of all things. He knows all things because he is the uh, creator of the universe. So a, a question that we, um, we like to talk about when we talk about the omniscience of God is this. What does God's omniscience have to do with you and me? And also, what does God's omniscience have to do with the gospel? Well, the answer to that question can be found in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. How does the omniscience of God apply to you and me? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13 says, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. You see, friends and family, God in his infinite knowledge, infinite uh, knowing all things, he knows every thought, every word, every action, everything that we do in this life. He sees it and he knows it. He knows all the good things we do. He knows all the bad things that we do. He knows our um, our secret sins, our physical sins. He knows the sins that go through our head. He knows every thought, word, and action that goes through our heart and mind. And the scripture teaches that he is going to hold you and I accountable. There, there's coming a day where he's going to judge the world in righteousness. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, It's appointed once a man to die and then face judgment. And every single person, every single human being is going to be held accountable for every thought, word, and action. And God knows them all because God is omniscience. So the omniscience of God can be scary. It can be scary for the unbeliever to know that you're going to be held accountable for everything because God knows everything that you've ever done. But friends, there's a better way. There's a way to be forgiven of everything thought, word, deed, and action. Yes, God knows everything that we've ever done, but he's made a way for us to be forgiven of all of our sins, including the secret sins, the sins in our mind, the sins in our heart. You see, the Bible says this, this is what God did for you so that you could be forgiven of all the sins that you've ever committed. At the appointed time, God sent forth his son born of a virgin, lived a sinless and perfect life, and suffered and died on the cross so that you and I could be forgiven of all of our sins. You see, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you put your trust in Him and you become a born-again Christian, all the sins that you've ever committed, and God knows each and every single one, He forgives you. He washes you clean. He places them under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. All past sin, all present sin, and even God knows all the future sin that, that you're going to blow it and you, that you're going to commit. And God says, I will forgive you of all your sins. And I know each and every one if you will put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you confessed your sin? Have you repented, turned from your sin? 
and put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? God, in his infinite wisdom and knowledge, he looks down upon you now and says, Put your trust in me. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And all those secret sins that nobody else knows about, that, 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 you, that you've committed, he says he will forgive you. He will forgive you and, and make you white as snow if you will do that. So the, um, and the omniscience of God should also um, encourage Christians. It encourages believers because sometimes believers experience difficulties in life. They, they go through challenging things. And what we need to understand in our difficult times, in our trials, in our suffering, when things are not going well, we need to remember that God is omniscient. He knows all things and he sees exactly where you're at. And he comforts us and strengthens us. He doesn't promise us a trial-free, uh, difficult-free life. But what he says, I will be with you in the trial. I'll be with you in the suffering. I'll be with you in the difficulty because I am the omniscient God. I know all things. So that's basically how the gospel connects to the omniscience of God. He sees all things, knows all things. He knows all the things that we've done wrong, and he's made a way for us to be forgiven. And that is through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. My hope and prayer today is that this um, teaching on the omniscience of God, it strengthens you, encourages you, and it helps you uh, completely and fully put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I also pray that it causes you to study the Bible for yourself and explore these awesome and amazing truths found in Scripture. They're there waiting for you. All you have to do is open your Bible and read and understand them and understand how amazing and how awesome God is because he is truly the omniscient God. God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight and bye for now.